All right, so we talked about decks that are safe from the ban list, but what about decks that have to be hit so the meta can be healthier and better? Share your thoughts in the comments down below, as well as like the video if you enjoy it, and let me know if you agree or disagree with the decks I'll be talking about today. So I have been reading you guys' comments, and you commented on my ban list predictions, as well as decks that shouldn't be hit, with your thoughts about decks that maybe should be touched. So for the first deck, let's talk about Rescue Ace. A lot of you have said that perhaps Rescue Ace would have to be addressed because it became much more consistent with the release of Sinful Spoils. So now one Turbulence just grants you so much, it is pretty much unreal. And there are ways of countering Rescue Ace, but for the most part, the deck is able to play through a lot. A, a lot. Rescue Ace Hydrant cannot be targeted while you have another Rescue Ace. So if you're playing around targeting negation, you're able to do that by like normal summoning airlifter or something before you're doing uh, anything with Rescue Ace Hydrant, if you maybe open it. There's ways of playing around targeting negation with emergency as well, which is like the most common way. But with the release of SP, there's also ways of playing around it that way. So it became kind of insane actually. And sometimes you're just able to bait out Ash with one it or maybe even emergency because you actually opened all of your extenders, like Preventer is amazing. And then once Surveillance resolves and you get to have Negation, Destruction, Revival, as well as a Search, which one of them can be activated during your turn. So you're able to go for Preventer, which maybe you get to summon during your turn and like set up something, or you wait and in the following turn, you're able to revive, not revive, bring back from the Banish pile, an Airlifter for follow-up or something. It is wild what the deck is able to accomplish just through one card. And um, I guess arguably that's something that should be looked at and maybe they would have to find ways of hitting this deck while still leaving it viable because in their mind, they're trying to push Sinful Spoils. And the best way to do that would be with Fire King, Rescue Ace, Infernoble. And Fire King doesn't have support until Maze of Melania and Phantom Nightmare. But the ban list is also around that time. So maybe they just decide to hit Rescue Ace since Fire Kings are going to be insane anyway. Another argument would be that maybe they don't hit Rescue Ace because they didn't really cash in on any reprints. They just put them in the side set and usually what they will do is put cards in the mega tins and later on maybe hit them. Like a good example was Runic, but Runic still wasn't completely annihilated and it did receive reprints as well as Labyrinth, which still didn't receive any hits and they definitely most definitely cashed in on all of the reprints with both of these decks because they were really, really popular. Now let's talk about how Rescue Ace could actually be hit. One way would be to limit or semi-limit Airlifter because Airlifter is actually what makes the deck... There's a lot of cards that make the deck really good. But Airlifter makes it so you get to play with Emergency, which like we talked about before, gets around targeting negation, gets you additional stuff. And in the graveyard, it actually has another effect where it's able to set a trapped card on like on the field so you have follow-up because usually if you resolve your turbulence and you don't immediately get away to headquarters your turbulence on the following turn is much worse however if you have airlifter again airlifter it's amazing uh, it gets you to headquarters which gets to shuffle back four of your either banished or in the graveyard rescue ace cards to draw a card but then turbulence actually gets the full value once more so there is something that has to happen to this deck probably, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Moving on to Unchained, which is another deck that is so strong and so popular in the meta. Okay, Unchained is really nice because, and I, I always say this, it is consistent at doing what it does. It's able to put up a couple disruptions, which are really impactful actually, being able to link off with your opponent's cards, going into SP, putting up Hiking Caesar, as well as Destruction, and possibly other things in some scenarios. That way you're able to counter the meta and have a lot of space for non-engine as well, so you're able to pretty much back up your entire combo. How would this deck be hit? And does it really have to be? Because it doesn't exactly put up negate, it just puts up a ton of disruption, which usually you would have to deal with board breakers, and that's probably the main issue because we're in a hand trap heavy format and sometimes the hand trap is not going to do enough so unchained will be able to consistently consistently perform because the top hand traps don't really hurt it there's draw impermanence valor and also ash to an extent which don't do that much because they will usually have extenders so you could argue that the main issue is consistency and how to deal with that one way would be to hit prosperity 
this is not exactly part of the engine, but we will get to the engine. I just wanted to talk about prosperity to sort of go back to Rescue Ace as well, because both decks can utilize it and definitely the consistency is going to be much better with prosperity in the deck as opposed to not playing it or having one copy. Some people play two, so I think semi-limiting prosperity would not do enough, but you are definitely taking away their consistency if they actually decide to hit the card because it is really, really strong. This is sort of just um, a thought I wanted to throw out there. You can elaborate it in the comments down below, but let's talk about engine. They could hit Shavara, but Shavara as well as Yama were amazing pieces of support which just came out. So I doubt that they are going to touch it, but it would be a way because you're taking away extenders with Shavara. And also not to mention that Shavara is able to attack something out. So that also plays around targeting negation. If you count how many times I said plays around targeting negation in this video, like, I don't even know, but that's pretty much, I guess, the name of the game right now. Okay, so Shavara, as well as Yama, and I don't think they're gonna hit it, but those cards are actually the most busted pieces of the engine right now. You could argue that they, for example, limit Prison or limit Aruha, which also are important starters. So there's something there. But other than that, you know, they might hit Tour Guide, which I don't think is the move because of the Goblin cards. And they just want to have a very generic card that's able to be splashed in different decks. And I think a lot of cards, and we're also going to talk about another card, they are really good for decks that maybe aren't meta. So immediately all of those rogue contenders become collateral damage and... A lot of times this happens and I just would hate to see it happen again because people genuinely enjoy decks that are in top contenders but play some of the meta cards. So how to actually deal with Unchained? I think a way would be to hit pieces of engine that actually came out when the archetype was actually released as opposed to hitting support. But let me know what you think and let's move on to another deck I have to talk about tier limits. On my predictions video, I did not put Agido and Kelbeck on there because it's kind of like, I'm not certain if they're going to hit them. And um, as much as we would all love to see it happen, I wanted to put out realistic predictions, but we're having a discussion right now. So in my opinion, I would love to see it happen. It is terrible the way you're able to mill your opponent's deck and actually take away their resources, take away their combo pieces, as well as going second cards. You see what they are playing and you get pluses off of milling five cards. There is the RNG factor in tier limits. It's always been there, but for the most part, because they are cutting a non-engine and they put in so many cards that actually do something when they get milled, they're gonna get to their tier names. It's almost inevitable. And the tier limits Kashtira is also an amazing card for this archetype. So they would have to hit the millers, definitely. But arguably they could also touch a piece of engine because like the field spell, is insane. It is still at three. You have three karma as well as terraforming. So that's really annoying. And it gets a pop as well, which like is another piece of disruption. And that's not fun. <laughs> and um, there's also Shaden, which gets searched off of the field spell, which is just an amazing card. Not to mention Merli. Like I, I could literally list every single tier name because Merli can be utilized with the help of Sprint. So there's an issue there immediately when you start to bridge to other archetypes and take cards from them. We have seen this happen in the past and it is always unhealthy. But the deck is... People don't really hate it as much because it doesn't put up negates per se. It like... Okay, so late. But other than that, it just puts up a lot of interactive disruptions. So from what I've seen, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but for the most part, people had an issue with Ishizu cards. So I think the route of hitting this deck would be to just get rid of Agido and Kelbeck. And I think we should be fine. Like maybe limit the field spell so you take away more of the consistency. And um, that's pretty much it. I do think the deck has to be hit, but I'm... I'm interested to see what actually happens. So there's the three decks I wanted to discuss. Moving on, I want to talk about one card, which sees play in different decks. So indirectly, those decks would be hit as well. And I'm talking about King Calamity. So if you take it away from Monadium as well as Centurion, those decks 
are hit. But Manadium can still compete and Centurion, I still think, has time to like get support and maybe become better without Calamity because there's a lot of potential there. It's just really tough to try to utilize cards right now without going for the lock because it's just so easy to do the lock. And um, since we were on the topic of Manadium, I maybe want to touch upon that deck a bit because some people pointed out that there's Busta cards in the archetype and I'm not saying there aren't. Like, if you look at Lightheart, this card might be limited. I got one of the comments on my previous video saying that Lightheart, Lightheart could be limited and that was something I was thinking of like probably months back, just thinking, okay, this card is really nice. It, it literally just takes a couple events for Monodium to do really well and it happened. And um, right now it is not topping so much that people are hating on it, but you can see it in top cuts a lot. So I think that maybe people don't have issues with it just yet. And there's so much diversity that like you cannot hate on every single deck. But, you know, the card is really, really nice. And people usually play two copies because you need follow-up. And um, maybe this would be a way to deal with Monodium just very, very lightly. And then still leave it because you need to think about the ban list as like, okay, if a couple decks get hit, then the other decks, like the B-tier decks, are going to rise and when they become really, really popular, people are going to have issues with them, especially if they are combo decks, which you would have to have multiple hand traps to stop. And we were never that happy in formats where like, you know, Dragon Link or like really, really busted, like the old Dragon Link with Augur Pain and stuff like that. You know, when really busted combo decks are around, it becomes a die roll meta and we don't really like that. So I think maybe Monadium could be hit very, very lightly. No pun intended. So, you know, it doesn't become too much of an issue. And as for the last deck, I will leave it up to you guys. Please let me know which decks or cards you think are the biggest issues. But I did want to touch upon Infernovo and Isolde as well. It pretty much is just the same as Monadium. If the top decks get hit, the combo decks are going to rise. And I don't think a lot of us would just want to see this insane Infernoble combo every single time playing through multiple pieces of disruption, especially right now when they have Sinful Spoils and all of that. I think we're going to get sick of that and it's going to be really annoying and tough to deal with. So Isolde could be hit. But I did talk about this in my predictions video. I think they might limit it. It's not going to do a lot. It's just what Konami has been doing in the past. So... I'm not certain what's going to happen, but I do think something has to happen to Infernoble. Maybe they don't hit Isolde because, again, the decks that utilize it would be collateral damage, but what would they hit? You know, let me know what you think. They're not going to hit Reno because it's a target, and uh, definitely not Ricardetto or anything that's, like, new support. I don't know. Maybe they just randomly, like, limit Ogier, <laughs> and they're like, that's it, you know. Uh... I'm not certain what's going to happen, but I do think the deck is an issue because it's really consistent actually and it's able to play it through so much. So I don't know, that's pretty much going to be it. I wanted to throw a couple ideas out there and like spark a discussion. So please share your thoughts in the comments and like the video if you enjoy me doing these types of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.